Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE biology lesson where you'll learn absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.3, features of organisms. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge syllabus exactly and we'll cover absolutely everything you need to know for your final exam. For topic 1.3, you need to state the main features used to place organisms into the different kingdoms and state the main features used to place organisms into groups within the animal kingdom. As you can see, the extended course is a little more detailed and includes information on plants, viruses and all five kingdoms. We'll begin with the core content as per usual, but you can skip to the relevant sections using the timestamps below. In our last lesson, we looked at classifying organisms into species and genus, which is a group of closely related species. On a much broader level, organisms can be grouped into kingdoms, two of which are the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom. You need to know their features. So, Animals are multicellular organisms whose cells have no cell walls or chloroplasts, and more on the features of cells in the next video. Most animals ingest solid food and digest it internally. Plants are also multicellular, but unlike animals, their cells have an outside cell wall. Plants contain chloroplasts as they make their food using sunlight via photosynthesis. Next, you need to know about the different groups or classes within the animal kingdom. We'll begin with the classes of vertebrates, which are animals that possess a vertebral column or spine. They are mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and fish. Mammals are a diverse group of warm-blooded vertebrates characterized by a number of distinct features, including four limbs that are adapted for a wide range of movements, hair or fur that helps to insulate the body and protect it from the elements, a diaphragm which plays a key role in pulmonary ventilation or breathing, mammary glands that produce milk to nourish their young and the ability to give birth to fully formed young instead of laying eggs. Fish are cold-blooded vertebrates, meaning they have no internal mechanism for temperature control. Their bodies are covered with overlapping scales, they have fins for movement and breathe using filamentous gills that are protected by a bony plate called the operculum. Fish reproduce sexually, but fertilization is usually external, meaning the male sheds sperm over the eggs after they've been laid. Reptiles are also cold-blooded and therefore use their environment to stay warm or keep cool. They're land animals, although some spend time in water, they have dry scaly skin to reduce water loss and lay eggs which usually have a tough rubbery shell. Birds are warm-blooded, meaning their body temperature stays constant regardless of the outside temperature. Below the neck, their vertebrae are fused together to form a rigid structure, which allows them to fly with more stability and control. Feathers are a defining characteristic of birds, and they serve multiple purposes such as insulation, protection, and flight. They have two wings and two legs that are covered with scales, claws for perching on branches and capturing prey, and a beak for feeding and manipulating objects. Birds produce eggs with hard shells that are fertilized internally and incubated by the mother until hatching. Finally, amphibians, including frogs, toads, and newts, are cold-blooded vertebrates with moist skin as opposed to scales. They spend time on land and in water where they lay their jelly-covered eggs. Amphibians have four limbs, and their back feet are often webbed to facilitate swimming. Now onto the different classes of arthropods, which are the members of the animal kingdom that don't possess a backbone. Their hard external skeleton, also known as a cuticle, encloses their bodies, providing protection and support. Their segmented bodies are divided into three distinct regions, the head, thorax, and abdomen. You need to know about four classes of arthropods, insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and myriapods. Insects are a large class of arthropods that includes houseflies, ants, butterflies, wasps, and beetles. They have three pairs of jointed legs, compound eyes, one pair of antenna, and usually two pairs of wings. Their cuticle or exoskeleton stops water loss from inside of the body, which allows insects to survive even in very hot, dry climates. Arachnids are a class of eight-legged arthropods that include spiders, scorpions, mites, and ticks. Their bodies are divided into two regions, a combined head and thorax region called the cephalothorax and an abdomen. They have several pairs of simple eyes, four pairs of limbs, and two pairs of pedipalps, which are used in reproduction and to bite, poison, and immobilize prey. Next, crustaceans are a diverse class of arthropods that include marine, freshwater, and land-dwelling species. They're characterized by their two pairs of antenna, compound eyes, an exoskeleton that forms a hard covering over most of the body, and a pair of jointed limbs attached to each segment. Like arachnids, crustaceans have a combined head and thorax. Finally, myriapods, including millipedes and centipedes, have a head and a segmented body that's not clearly divided into a thorax and abdomen. They have a pair of legs on each body segment, and as the myriapod grows, extra segments are formed so that the number of legs and body segments increases. They have a pair of antenna and simple eyes which are used for sensing their environment. 
Okay, so that's everything you need to know for the core section. So we'll move on now to look at the extended content. For extended, you need to know the main features of three more kingdoms in addition to plants and animals, and they are fungus, prokaryote, and protoctist. Fungi are distinct from other organisms as they're composed of thread-like hyphae instead of cells. These branching hyphae form a structure known as a mycelium and contain scattered nuclei throughout the cytoplasm. Fungi come in many forms, including mushrooms, puffballs, bracket fungi, molds that grow on food and decaying plant matter, and yeasts which are single-celled. Fungi break down organic matter externally and absorb nutrients through their cell walls. The prokaryote kingdom is comprised of the bacteria and blue-green algae. These organisms are single-celled, but they're distinct from other single-celled organisms because their chromosomes are not contained into a nucleus. We'll cover the features of bacteria in far more detail in topic 1.2. Finally, the protoctist kingdom also consists of single-celled organisms, but unlike prokaryotes, their chromosomes are enclosed within a nucleus. Some protoctists have chloroplasts and make their food by photosynthesis, while others, like the amoeba, consume and digest their food internally. For extended, you also need to know about viruses, which aren't included in any kingdom, as they don't demonstrate the characteristics of living things. Although viruses differ greatly in shape and structure, they all have a central core composed of RNA or DNA wrapped in a protein coat. And don't worry, we'll return to DNA and RNA in chapter 4. They don't have a nucleus, cytoplasm, cell organelles, or cell membrane, nor do they eat, respire, excrete, or grow. Viruses are capable of reproducing, but only within the cells of living organisms. In addition to grouping organisms within the animal kingdom, for extended you also need to state the main features used to place organisms into groups within the plant kingdom. And the two groups you need to know are the ferns and flowering plants. Ferns are land plants whose stems, leaves and roots are very similar to those of flowering plants, although the stems of ferns are usually completely below ground. Ferns do not produce seeds, instead they produce single-celled spores which are released from the many sporangia on the underside of the leaves. Flowering plants, by comparison, reproduce by seeds that are formed in flowers, and more on the general structure of flowering plants in Chapter 8. Flowering plants are divided into two subclasses, monocotyledons and dicotyledons. Monocotyledons only have one cotyledon, or embryonic leaf, inside their seeds. Their flower parts, including the petals, are grouped into threes, and they usually have long, narrow leaves with parallel veins. Dicotyledons have two embryonic leaves in their seeds. Their flowering parts are grouped into fives, and they usually have broad leaves with a branching network of veins. Well done, you've just covered absolutely everything you need to know on topic 1.3, Features of Organisms. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate your subscription, and I'll see you next time for topic 2.1, Cell Structure.